What up players, it's Wallboss Tay up in this mud and I'm doing a very quick video now for beginners, beginners to the Warhammer hobby. You're gonna need um, a couple of things to get started in the hobby. Obviously after you've got your rule book and your army book, you're gonna need to go out and buy kits. And so you get a box from your local retailer or off of eBay or something and you pop open the box. Inside the box, you've got a bunch of these plastic frames with parts on them and you find the different parts that you're gonna use and then you put together your figure. So the first things, the first step in the hobby should be getting your figures all clipped out of the sprue and organized so that you can start gluing them together. Now, when I do that, you're gonna need a couple of tools that I um, always use. A hobby clippers, a hobby knife, and if you're using plastic, like most of the Games Workshop kits are now, some plastic glue, liquid cement from four plastic models. They also have this brand called Zappa Gap. This is the super glue version with the green front. They also have an orange version, which is called Plasti Zap for plastic models. The difference is that plastic, plastic zap or plastic glue or plastic cement will have a chemical reaction that forces the, the plastic to kind of break down and when it hardens, it bonds to itself. Whereas super glue is the chemical that um, when it hardens, it, it sticks the two pieces together. So I've had some horrible experiences where I've been making night goblins from, you know, 2009 using this and uh, today, when I take them out of their case, more often times than not, their, ar little, their little arms will snap off because the super glue has dried up and it's uh, the only thing holding it together, whereas plastic glue will hold a lot longer. If you're using resin models, though, then super glue is the way to go because plastic glue does not adhere to the model pieces and uh, super glue does a fantastic job with it. If you're using metal or resin models, besides using your super glue, you're also going to want to pin the models together, and we'll go over that in a different video. Today we're only going to look at the basic plastics pieces. So when you're cutting your model off of the sprue, I decided to go with this Empire model, and just in case you were wondering. When you cut your pieces out of the sprue, you're going to take your hobby clippers, and you've got the flush side, the flat side and you've got the, um, the other side. So you always want to make sure that the flat, flushed side of your clippers is against the piece. So say I'm clipping out this piece right here. I want the flat, flush side of my clippers to go up against the piece and clip it off like that. Then I'll have to turn the sprue around, make sure that the flat side is up against the piece I want, and then I'll clip again. Oops. And then I will clip again, boop, and then find the other part. And you just want to go around and find all the places where your model piece is clipped to the sprue, and you just snap, snap, snap. Once you have your piece out, you're going to take your hobby knife. Be very, very careful with your hobby knife. You can really hurt yourself if you're not careful with these as I'm sure many of us veterans have done in a long time. I've got two right here. We're gonna take a look at the difference. One of them I've been using for a long time, this one on the bottom. The tip has already snapped off. It's gotten a little bit dull. It doesn't cut as, off, as well as it used to. You can kind of see the light reflecting off all of the um, blade there. The blade is dull just a little bit. And this top piece, this top one, it's a little bit more recent. I just put it into the X-Acto handle. When you get an X-Acto knife, you always get, you know, three or four extra blades, which is great. It lasts you for a very long time. You see how it shines really nicely? And it's got the tip. So if I want, I can drill out bolter holes, do all sorts of stuff with, with that. I can carve into green stuff or anything like that. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take off any pieces of flash. When we're talking about flash in the modeling industry, we talk about the little pieces that have been left over when you are cleaning a model. So right here on the elbow pad, you can 
see this is flash. You also have something called mold lines, which is this line right down the center. Usually it's in the center of any piece. And so they try to cleverly hide it by making it a part of the armor or stuff like that, or make it hard to see. But usually, more often than not, mold lines are going to always be in the center of a piece. So, you're going to take your knife, hobby knife, and we're going to get rid of the biggest pieces of flash. If you have a really big piece of flash, then you can use your clippers, again, your hobby clippers, and clip it off. You always want to slice away from your body. If you slice in, uh, it's a lot easier to see, but you have the danger of cutting into your thumb, cutting into your finger really hurting yourself. So when cutting big pieces especially, you want to cut away from yourself where there's nothing, no body pieces or no body parts to get in the way. And then you should be able to get your flash off like that. Then you're going to take the back side and that is what you're going to use to clean any mold lines. Again, being careful with the tip of your knife, making sure that it's not near you, it's not going to hurt you. And you just do this gentle rubbing motion until the mold line is gone. In the past, I've used the sharp edge, the sharp side, the blade side to clean mold lines. And what that does is it will gouge out a part of your model right down the center that you don't want. Okay, so say I did that for all of these pieces. I'm going to look now, double check. See, here's the mold line on this Empire State Trooper's leg right down the middle. So I'm going to be cleaning it off. When you use the back side of a hobby knife, you can almost scrape as hard as you want and it's not going to gouge out the model. But if I was to use the blade side, it would dig in and uh, that's not what we want. You also, super important beginner tip, you always want to make sure that you clean the insides of the legs and the arms as well because that's where a lot of the troublesome mold lines hide. So here you can see right down the center of the pantaloon. It's got another tricky mold line. Tau tend to have very, very clearly prominent mold lines right down the center of their helmets. A lot of people were hoping when they recut the tau sprues, they would find a way to work around that, but they have not come out with a new tau fire warrior kit yet. And there you can, if you turn your figure in the light, you can kind of see where the mold lines are. So we cleaned up the body, we're looking for the flash. The flash is not so bad in this one. So we're going to cut away and then clean. I had this dream last night that I was making a, a cookie butter sandwich. And cookie butter is from Trader Joe's. Oh, it's so good. Cookie butter. I never got to eat it though. But I made it and I woke up in the morning and I was so hungry. Once you have a little bit of experience and you become, uh, if you get the, the urge to, for example, I myself, I hate cutting away. I feel like I've done the hobby enough where I can safely cut into myself and not hurt myself. Also because I've cut myself so many times. So sometimes if I'm very careful, I can, I, I allow myself to cut towards myself if you're come upon a, if you come upon like a very tricky part and you just don't use, don't use pressure. Like when you're cutting away big pieces of flash or you're trying to really dig into a mold line, you can cut away from yourself a lot safer than you can if you're cutting in. Generally though, I like to use the back of the blade for cleaning if possible. You can't imagine how many Space Marine legs and Night Goblin arms and stuff you can ruin just by using the, the sharp side. Okay, when it comes to actually gluing your pieces together, there are a couple of different ways you can do it. The way I like to do it is, I like to glue the model together first and then I will put it on the base. Sometimes you don't even want to put it on the base at the beginning. You'd uh, rather paint it separately and then paint the base separately and then you combine the two. That's potentially more for those who do display pieces though, or dioramas and such. 
All right, when gluing a model, the way I like to do it is I leave the head off till last. I leave the body on the side. Some pieces, some models come torso and legs separately. Most of the older kits do that. Some of the newer kits do not like Skaven, um, Flagellants, uh, Death Corps of Krieg if you play with Forge World pieces. The torsos will already be attached to the legs. If not though, if you have to attach the torsos, that's a really great time for you to pose it. And I'll, I'll try to do a video on posing later on, um, but we're just going on basic assembly today. So say I glued the torso to the legs first, and that's dried. And so the next thing we're going to focus on is the weapon. If you've got arms separate from, with weapon pieces missing, for example, if you do like the the, the scythe or the, the reaper kind of looking thing, then um, the, the blade will be separate from the rest of the of the weapon, if that makes sense. So what I like to do like with this halberd, for example, is glue the piece to the hands and the weapons first, so that when I glue the arms onto the body, I don't have to worry about getting the fiddly bits. So I'm checking, this is called a dry fit. And the dry fit is basically you take the two pieces and you fit them together. Sometimes there's gonna be some flash or something in the way that's going to keep your pieces from sticking together. So you want to make sure you dry fit it before you put the glue on. When using glue, it's always better to use less than you need. Less than you think you need, because the glue will pull out when you push the pieces together. And now I'm just holding them together. With most glues, holding it together and pressing it firmly together for about 20 seconds will do the trick. And try not to slide it around and so what I do is I base my hands I will brace my hands rather on the table and sometimes I'll count to 20 if I'm bored but if I'd if I, if I can I'll have like a podcast playing or I'll have a TV show playing in the background so it just gives you something to do and distract yourself with while you're waiting for the glue to dry a little bit Okay. So at this point, what I'm going to do is, usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll have 10 or 20 or a whole squad of these guys all clipped out in pieces. If I'm doing a squad, I kind of like to do it batch painting style or all together. And that goes for the assembly too. Batch painting or batch assembly basically means you do a whole mass of them at one time, step by step, so that when you're done, you're done with all of them instead of building up one guy, painting him, and then putting him aside, and then building up another guy, painting them. I feel like it's more rewarding to do it all together at once. So after giving it a couple more minutes to dry, what I'll do is dry fit the arms to the body. So we want to make sure that we get the correct angle that we want, and that when we when we put the glue, we know where it's going to be. You want to take into consideration for pieces like this, State Trooper, where the halberd is in front of the body, that when you're painting it, you're going to be able to see where your paintbrush is going to have to go in an angle to paint the model. For example, if I really want to paint his chest piece, then having the halberd right here across the front is going to make it harder for me. So I want to glue the model holding the halberd maybe up or a little bit lower at his side. Or another option is you just leave it off for now, paint the model separately, and then glue the pieces on together afterwards. I find that I like to glue my models completely though first, rather than waiting until after I've painted them. Certain models like Chaos Warriors with their shields, a, a lot of painters would prefer to paint them separately, and that's totally up to you. A lot of times too when you're assembling a model or even when you're after you spray them you'll notice that there is a mold line you either didn't get completely or that you missed and didn't really pay attention to so there's this mold line down the center of his arm you can see again going down the center of the piece that once this model is dry I'm gonna take care of the reason I'm not gonna do it now is even though it's annoying me looking at it is that you want the glue to set the pieces as 
as clearly as possible. If you start to move it around, you're gonna smudge the glue. It's gonna have to create a whole new bond. And uh, I could be wrong. It could be totally fine to do it. I'm just uh, very particular. It's kind of how I've, my experience with working with plastic cement and model pieces. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is usually I will at this stage either put on the head or glue the model to the base. In this case, I'm gonna glue the model to the base. So I'm putting some glue onto his feet. And then when using a base, it's very tricky because you want to make sure that your model sits on it. And in the case of Warhammer Fantasy or games where your models have to line up, you're going to really need to make sure that they can rank up next to each other. That's why a lot of modelers kind of complained because they're, when they built up their models, they, they didn't realize that they're almost impossible to, to rank up because of the way that they had built them. Sometimes you might notice that your weapon is a little bit crooked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just nudge it just a little bit to straighten it out. There we go. So here's my first model. Once you've given a little time to set, and whether or not you press the model pieces together, it's, it's up to you. Just give a little time to set, and then I'm gonna go for the head. Posing a model is is interesting because with with any model, the focus is gonna go to the face. So our guy here has his mouth open like he's screaming, so we can either glue him looking front, like screaming at what he's stabbing, or we can have him looking to the side, like shouting for everybody and encouraging them. And it's really up to you, which is what I love about this hobby. Everyone has the potential to have a different looking model, even though they use all the same pieces and all the same kit, their models can look completely different from the next guys. I love it. Creativity. There you go. You build another 20 guys, put them in the squad, make sure that they can all rank up next to each other, and you've got a fully built up squad. In the case of Warhammer 40,000, you don't have to worry about ranking up because everybody comes on circular bases and all they have to do is stay within two inches of each other. With Warhammer Fantasy, however, it's really important, especially if you have troops that have large weapons like this, that you space them accordingly. Maybe don't even um, glue them on completely to the bases until you kind of give a thought to how you're going to rank them up. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll build I'll glue a lot of my guys to the left side of the base and then the next rank I'll build them to the right side so they can kind of alternate and be in the windows of the guy in front of them. If you have tips and tricks and would like to share them, this is a video aimed for the beginners in the hobby and I encourage you to leave them in the comments or make a video yourself and put it on your channel. That's always even better and then we can all follow each other's work. Thanks for watching everybody. Stay tuned for the next video.